Now, as we are sharing in season two, we decided to spice things up a little bit on business agenda. Yes, George, on that note, we'll be taking you from the city. To the jungle. <laughs> yes, indeed. Kickstart the second season of Business Agenda. We are at the Akajero National Park. And we want to highlight business here at the park mm -hmm. and how the country and the community is benefiting from it. So stay tuned to Business Agenda as we show you the wild, the money, and of course, the animals. Welcome to Akajero National Park. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Business, business Agenda. agenda. Akajero National Park is located on the east of Rwanda. It covers over 2,500 square kilometer of savanna west of Kajero River, which denotes to the frontier with Tanzania and has a variety of wildlife and over 500 different species of birds. Dominated scenically by the lip wreath of swamps and lakes that follow the meandering course of Akajero River, the most remote source of the Nile, this is the olden African savanna landscape of tangled acacia woodland interspersed with open grassland. Akajera is, above all, big game country. Herds of elephants and buffalo emerge from the woodland to drink at the lakes, while lucky visitors might just stumble across a leopard or a spotted hyena. When we arrived at the Akajero National Park, we were received by a female tourist guide who took us through what happens around the National Park. These herbivores or carnivorous animals also have aquatic animals. Yeah. We have got Lake Yema here, Lake Duanyakizinda, Lake Mihind, where we would like to see some hippos, some crocodiles, different species of birds. We have about 525 species of birds. Akajera National Park has had a troubled past with refugees from Rwandan civil wars returning to live in the area in the late 1990s, harming the environment through cattle grazing and poaching. Consequently, the government reduced Akajera by half, allowing the new residents to stay in one part and protecting the rest. <laughs> In that year, 1934, the park was very big. It was 2,500 square kilometers. So the western part of this park was a hunting zone. The hunting zone was 340 square kilometers. When you look at this park and uh, you use the 340 kilometers squared for hunting, you find that Akajera National Park was more than 1 over 10, a tenth of the whole of Rwanda. And you know that our country is quite small. People came back after the 1994 genocide perpetrated against the Tutsi in order for all of them to settle. The government of Rwanda saw there was no way they could all fit in one area, so the government cut the western part of this park and had people settle there. <laughs> Akajero National Park is a comfortable two to three hour drive from Kigali and can be visited on a long day trip if you're short of time. However, although game densities aren't massively high, it is an exceptionally pretty park with pleasantly few other visitors, so it is worth staying a couple of days to explore it. The only entry to Akajero National Park is via Kayonza Gate in the south, close to the park headquarters, and Akajero's best lodge, Nyungwe Gate in the north, is currently only available to exit this park. Yeah, we have um, been to a number of parks across Africa over the last 20 years and actually in Mary's case a little bit longer than that she was in uh, Zimbabwe in the uh, in the 80s um, and we're always interested in just 
trying to push a little bit further out into the field and uh, our experience we, we arrived last night and then did a full drive this morning and this is really untouched this is uh, this is wide open territory physically it's very attractive I think the tourists have to be very sensitive to uh, to the needs of the local community so I think things are moving in the right direction at present, there are only two accommodation options in Akajero National Park aside from camping. Ruzizi Tented Lodge opened in 2013 and is close to the main gate to the south. Managed by the African parks, it is a pretty bush camp on the shores of Lake Ihema. Ruzizi is a Nico Lodge which have seven tents. It's a tent lodge. It's a fast tent lodge which has been built in Rwanda. And, uh, it, I say it's an eco lodge because we use the solar power, we use water coming from borehole and we can up to now have accommodate 14 guests if a tent is occupied by two persons but we, are, we have two tents under construction, one family tent and one VIP tent so in the future we may be able to accommodate almost around 20 persons. And the idea was to help for the tourists who visit Akajara National Park to be able to f spend more nights in the, in the park and in the rickshaw and feed, have like a cross uh, connection with the nature, as you can see the environment of the lodge. What I can say, we do have some security issues which was been planned and think because it's fenced by electric fancy and yes the people can come in but they, as you see to go to the loom or to go to the terrace we use boardwalk so and because the hippo can't jump up so when you're to your boardwalk it's a, it's very safe and the other fences is to help for some like elephant or the other animals to not come in because like elephant can destroy the boardwalk and whatever but Regarding safety, it's safe and uh, there is no any problem which I can say can happen to, to, to customers. The other option is the Akajero Game Lodge currently under restoration. Primarily four years ago we came in, the key goal was to secure the park. And after we've secured the park, the animal numbers have increased. There was a lot of market research, tourists, tour operators were all interviewed in, in the park and in, in Chigali. Um, and there was a need, basically they showed a need for something different within Rwanda, within Akagera, somewhere where tourists could stay, the international market could come and spend more than one day or just a transient day visit. That, that income generated stays within the park, stays to operate the park and it helps us in our sustainability as that's, that's a key goal of Akagera Management Company, making Akagera sustainable. Akajara's National Park roads have improved significantly since African parks came on board, allowing for varied game drives around plains, hills and lakes. They usually take place in the mornings and afternoons or will take a full day for venturing to the north, with night drives an option for sporting Akajara's nocturnal wildlife. Boat trips along the shores of Lake Ihema, Rwanda's second largest lake, yield some great aquatic bird sightings, including numerous African fish eagles, marabou stork, crowned cranes, open billed storks, comorants, herons, and egrets, and you can even fish on Lake Shakani. Tourism numbers are growing now. We have a policy of 5% net goes towards community, what we call revenue sharing funds, where it gets split between three districts and is going to different projects such as clinics, schools, um, dairy milk collection centers, and beekeeping and different other eco-friendly projects. Kigera does, it, it's a wildlife reserve, um, it's a park. There will always be a need for, for food, so, so people sometimes illegally poach. Um, there, there is, we're a boundary park, so people try to move in and out of the park. Um, as we're growing, it will be a challenge. Tourism will be a challenge as well. Um, we need to manage the tourism, we need to know how to spread it, um, and we need to ensure the security of the park. The law was there uh, uh, from the beginning, from the, uh, the, the day this, this was a park, which is uh, 1934. But what is different is the facilitation. Uh, and equipment that I, we we use to facilitate our work. So uh, before it was not easy because there was less resources, uh, less facilitation for law enforcement, which is different today. 
uh, when I say facilitation, I, I'm talking of infrastructure, that is uh, law enforcement uh, houses, uh, equipment they use on, on, on a field, vehicles, and so on, uh, guns and ammunition. Yeah, here I'm going to show you the, some of the tools. Don't worry, I'm not going to aim at you, but this is how it's done. This is the bow and arrow that poachers use and then kill uh, animals. Uh, the sharpness and, um, and the strength of this may not kill an animal, but at times they put uh, poison, uh, like snake poison, so that they, it kills. It, even if it touches slightly, uh, uh, just a scratch, an animal will eventually die. It's well built, clean and safe. So we are allowed to hold, to hold them for 24 hours at least before we take the police, as we do our investigation, as we do interrogation, and so on, and paper documentation. Yeah. So here, uh, what you see are uh, bicycles and uh, motorcycles that previously have been used, uh, we have been arrested, uh, found you, uh, transporting what is commonly called Kawaruka, but in English name it is uh, African sandalwood. An emperor will come and then go through and then they will take it yeah, and then it is trapped. Other challenges are to try and, try and keep ahead of the times and always keep, as you said, customer service, keep attracting tourists. We want this park to be self-sustainable um, and an attraction for Rwandans and the international market. Since we've been here in the four years, the, the prime goal in the four years is to secure Akigera through law enforcement, to build infrastructure, roads, etc. And to, to be able to build, you need staff employment. Um, at present, we're employing over 250 local staff um, for building, road maintenance, for the fencing team. So um, benefiting through tourism itself right now, it's not 100% not there, um, but they're benefi benefiting through employment, which is critical. It's money in individuals pockets yeah. I started working here on the 30th May 2011 it is of benefit that we live near the national park and all those living around here are happy. so whatever does not go right they report it to the national park authorities they then visit the area to see if it was destroyed maybe by animals mm. And they are compensated. Most of the things that we use here are from within, like tiles, sticks, stones. We get them from the village around this area. The residents get money from selling the items to the park. Well, a good component, another one have a long neck, it's called African data. We have a nest here because it's very safe to know anything can attack it. But if you have heavy winds, so sometimes the nest is in the water, if you have a baby, it means that the crocodile eat you. But if also if they put the poop down in the water, it means that the fish get the food. And also that birds can make fishing, can eat a fish. So ecosystem taking place. The park has been split into different zones, wildlife zone, high tourism density zone, low tourism density zone. In the north we're hoping to get concessionaires. By that we mean very professional tourism operators, wildlife operators such as the wildernesses, the Singitas, the Grumetis in other parts of Africa to identify they want to develop within Akagera. They build and operate lodges here and the park gets a concession fee out of that, again a step further to the sustainability of the park.